second half of the NFL season is here, and those young QBs are putting on a show. But who's the best team? This is when we separate the pretenders from the contenders. And you can follow that story every Sunday with the NFL on CBS. And we're back on 4th and Forever. You guys know the drill, but today a very special guest, an NFL legend. He's one of the top running backs to ever play the sport, and he's got the strongest handshake I've ever felt in my entire life. Future Hall of Famer, Adrian Peterson. What's up, bro? Not much, brother. How you doing, Mark? You guys coming off a huge win where you scored two touchdowns, but you had your head coach fired last week. What was that like for Coach Bevel taking over? What were those conversations in the locker room like? And, you know, how have you and Matt Stafford had to step up as leaders in this locker room? Yeah, you know, anytime you go through a coach change, it's, you know, it, it can be difficult. Um, you know, so it was it was an unfortunate situation. You know, I really like Coach Patricia. You know, obviously they thought it was time for a change. You know, so they made the change and moved Bev into the intern um, head coach position. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, immediately things change, you know, because from, you know, you get different personalities um, when when you change coaches, like f between coaches, right? Um, so the schedule changed tremendously. Yeah, and I was just going to ask, you know, that was my first question because one's like a defensive guy, this Belichick system and, and mm -hmm. tree, and then you move to an offensive guy and Coach Bevel. Yeah, give me some of those changes schedule-wise because that's a big deal to players. It changes up your whole yeah. routine. Yeah, it changed the whole routine. So for me, it was something that I, I that I love. The guys in the locker room, they were very appreciative of it as well. Um, you know, I think Patricia, his schedule was more. It was uh, it was kind of more demanding. You know, it was like meetings after meetings. You know, maybe a five, six, seven minute break in between to kind of, you know, you know, hit the head or do what you got to do, grab some to drink. Um, but with bad schedules, kind of more your traditional, you know, your traditional type schedule. And uh, I think that allowed guys to kind of take a deep breath, you know, and relax. Because sure. guys, you know, it is what it is. Guys are really complaining about that, you know. And I know when I, when I first made it here and after that first week, you know, I'm like, so um, – is this how the schedule is going to be, or is he kind of, and he's kind of, is he kind of winding down or transitioning from the training camp, you know, schedule? Right. And it was like, no, you know, this is this is what it is. I was like, well, you know, <laughs> but <laughs> but for me, you know, whatever, I can grind through whatever. So, but um, I can see how that schedule could have been rough for a lot of for a lot of people. So that was the first change, and then uh, the practice schedule was, as well change and uh what i like about the practice schedule is it's kind of it give us the opportunity offensively and defensively to create more of a tempo more of a groove uh get into a groove and practice goes a little quicker as well um we have our special team um is our first period and then mm -hmm. we get into and while they're in special team we kind of doing our individuals and one-on-one -on -one work that type of stuff and then we get into practice and originally it was like three different special team periods throughout practice you know so you were cut and you were like 10 minutes special teams and you would get back into your offense whether it was seven on seven or and then a team and uh you yeah. know vice versa with the defense and then bam special teams again so it just kind of it kind of for me it felt longer you know even though you were probably out there the same amount of time it just felt longer and it sure. wasn't you you really couldn't get that groove um but you know we have a lot of leaders on the team you know matt of course you know, being that main guy, being here for so long and, you know, me just stepping in and, you know, I'm more of a, you know, I, I talk with guys as well and speak my mind, um, but I'm more about, you know, showing guys, you know, as yeah. far as going out there and putting the work in, how it's done and things like that. You know, Jamie Collins, we got a lot of guys on defense um, that were with Patricia down in New England that's mm -hmm. here. And those guys do a great job as well of help leading this team. Yeah, I, I appreciate you saying that. That's, um, you know, I think so much goes into a coaching change like that. And w where were you when you found out? Did they, like, call a team meeting or did they send everybody a text message or how did they break the news to the players? When I found out, I was here at home and I just got a group text from um, our position coach and um, – I was like, wow. And then after that, it was like texts start coming, you know, the yeah. news break or whatever. And then they call 
a um, emergency team meeting. So we had right, a team meeting, right. and you know they kind of addressed it and uh, named Coach Bevel the intern head coach, and we just kind of went from there. When you guys went back and watched the film of last game, I got to know, because I've been around you a little bit, I know you want the rock. I know you're ready to run it. There was a fourth and one in the first quarter. You're, so you're smiling because you – did you – just tell me. Did you talk to Coach Bev and say, hey, man, we don't got to get too cute on fourth and one, all right? You guys handed off a little jet sweep, and he got stuffed. Before he could make a yard, he barely got back to the line of scrimmage. I mean, we got four games left, Coach. He said well, he's going to give you everything he's got for 35 days, right? For five yeah, weeks. So now yeah. you got about 28 days left. What's the deal, man? Tell him on fourth and one. Tell old Matty. Hey, man, just audible yeah. that thing. Just give me the dive. Just hand me off a dive. And you know what? Like, and my initial thought was, okay, they're going to hand me the ball. Like, and you know, I'm going to get the first down. But the right. first thing I said to Bev when I came off the field, I was like, great call. Because it was. <laughs> it, 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 oh, it, I thought you were being no, funny. And, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I was, I was being serious. I was like, that was a great call. Because I did my fake to the, to the right, and so I'm looking at the jet sweep going to the left. Yeah. And initially, when I take off, I'm like, okay, that's first down. And all of a sudden, I see him getting, you know, he's getting drove back. And, uh, you know, like, we talked to Agnew. We was like, we was like hey, bro, come on now. It's fourth and one. You got to lower your shoulder. And yeah. you got to get that. You know, like, the, it, the play was there. The play was yeah. there. He, he, just, uh, he just didn't approach it the right way. And it, it bit us, you know. Then I'm sure Bear was like, dang, I should have just handed it off to Adrian. But it was a great <laughs> play call in the sense of it was there. And, you know, the player just didn't execute it um, the way he, he, he should have. 